Okay, as any other professional welders know, the welding that we see out and about in everyday life can be pretty bad. I'm going to the gym today and I'm gonna look at some of the welding on the gym equipment there. And then we're also gonna fire up the welding machine and demonstrate some welds. It's leg day at the gym, let's go. Okay, getting warmed up here and I'm getting set up. I'm gonna hit the hack squat machine here first. The entire thing is made with a lot of rectangular tubing. I've done a ton of production welding with this type of material back in my day. And as I'm getting through my first sets here I take a closer look and I found this this is a great example of something that I teach and preach on my channel all the time it doesn't look like much to most people but take a closer look right here now overall there is gonna be a few things that I'm gonna point out here but I'm gonna focus on one fundamental thing that I want to pay attention to first and this little area is what we're looking at here which is the start of the weld this type of stuff is super common we can see that the start of this pass is a little bit grumpy and then as things get hotter we can see that things get straightened out and then the weld starts to take on a bit more of a shape if we want a little bit more need my workbook here we go Oh, hold on. Look what I've got here. I have my TIG welding workbook. This is absolutely free. Download it in the description below. Go get yours. Now, although the welding that we're looking at here is done with a wire feed process, what we're going to do is we're going to learn from the book here. and We're also going to set up and demonstrate it with TIG welding. I'm going to mock up a similar joint here, and I'm going to use the TIG welding machine here to weld it out. Now, looking at this little fella here, we can see that this is very common with TIG welding, and this is having a start that is not properly formed before traveling. Here's what's common with most beginners when they are learning to TIG weld. They light up, they see the weld start to establish, and they rip off and get going right away. Now, regardless of what process of welding you're doing, TIG, MIG, uh, stick, whatever, you need to establish your starts before traveling. Look at this example of a lap weld here. This is mine. These joints are notoriously grumpy to get established, but we can see how the start of the weld looks the exact same as the finish of the weld, as well as the connection or start stop in the center nice so watch this here I'm gonna set up my TIG welding machine what I'm using today is the Canna weld 201 pulse D machine this machine is absolutely awesome Canna weld is actually running a bit of a rebate program on these machines right now you can see on screen the different rebate details that you can check out on their website seriously I've used this machine for like five years in this shop it's awesome now getting set up here I'm gonna start welding on this joint and show you exactly what I'm talking about you can see take a look at my start here. Look at how patient I am with this one. Notice how I'm not tearing off in a panic. I'm letting things establish at the start. And then what happens is after you get a proper start established, moving along after this point is a breeze. Now take a look at this pass now. See how the start of this one is the exact same as the rest of the pass. This is what we want. Everything looks established and consistent from the start all the way to the finish. The start of a weld needs time. It's just something that's a fundamental thing that gets your weld situated and established the way that you want and this becomes even more so important when you're doing a tie-in or a weld connection between different passes and believe me we are gonna see more of this later in the episode stay tuned now check out this weld as I'm gutting it out on my set here see how the start of this one is all cold and it actually shows lack of fusion we can see the filler is kind of stacked up in the center of the pass and kind of stuck here and then take a look at this area here this is most likely where somebody did a little pause or a correction and we can see that this edge now fully blends out and we can see the filler get better fusion to the edge of the weld but then take a look at this in doing so we can see that things got too wide here all of a sudden there was another corrective action that looks like was made and at this point this is where the welder found the sweet spot and then the weld continues towards the end. And we're gonna talk about the issues that we see with the end of this one, don't worry, hold up. But looking at this one again, we essentially have three zones to this welding pass. We have the first area, which is too cold, not established. Then we have the next area, which is too hot or too wide. And then after everything gets straightened out, we have the area that looks just about right. Now again, watch me hit this start and the beginning of this joint, check it out. See how instead of arcing up and feeding it and then starting to travel right away, I am taking my time. I let the filler material blend out to exactly what I want as far as the shape and profile. The amount of filler or weld reinforcement is built up and my edges look really good. And then at this point, it's time to party. I can just move on and just maintain the details I establish at the start. Remember, after everything has been done properly at the beginning of each pass, all you really should have to do is just baby 
babysit things as you move along. No more corrective actions or adjustments that are going to mess up consistency. And again, like the chapter in my workbook talks about, it is all about the start. Seriously, people. Now, as far as this area here at the end, this is what I call an improper connection. This area has some serious issues, but we're gonna go over that in a few. Hang tight here. Okay, finishing up on that set here, what is next? Oh my God, we got Bulgarian split squats up next. Ugh. These are pure torture. No welding involved here. I'm basically just surviving. Okay, over to the seated leg press. We're gonna hit calves now. Okay, locking in here, I am hitting this set real nice, feeling pretty good, but as I'm wrapping it up here, what is this? Okay, this is something that just makes me really sad inside because this is such an easy and simple thing to fix and take care of. Can you see what's wrong with it? Check it out. Taking a look here, what do you see that is wrong with it? Can you spot what I spotted? Okay, look at this area right here. See how when this one finishes off, it is concave. And we can see clearly that this has had the parent material cut away. We now have a hollow or concave pocket or crater. Now, this is actually a little bit further down the rabbit hole of what we saw with the previous joint on the corner here that we talked about. See how the end of the pass on this one is blown out and we can see that there is a massive crater to take care of. This is absolutely something that has to be taken care of no matter what you're doing. Typically something like this will occur at the end of a welding pass or as we saw in this one on the hack squat machine. In some areas this can happen when connecting to or from another welding pass. And again, it is so damn easy to take care of this problem. And it is simply just a little bit of an extra shot of filler and some good heat. Watch this. If I am welding towards an open corner like this one here, there's actually a couple things that would have taken care of this problem completely. Obviously like on this one, if we are welding big thick plate, we want to be penetrating and properly cutting into the parent material for good penetration. But we also wanna make sure that when we do so, we are compensating with adequate filler material. This way you can really dig in with penetration, but you're also making sure that you fill things up with proper reinforcement for weld integrity. Now, if you finish a pass and it looks like this here, I would basically always encourage somebody to just put a nice button of filler or a couple extra dabs of filler material at the end to fill this up. The edges need to be completely blended or wetted into the plate surface. We basically just wanna make sure that this concave or hollow area is filled up. And this is what's gonna prevent any crater cracking down the line or corrosion in some circumstances with different types of material. Now, honestly, taking a look at the rest of this one, the welding passes look really great. We can see that the passes are really well centered. The edges are properly blended or wetted into the base material really nicely. There's a nice little button right in the corner that looks like it's been done really well, actually. But with this area here, if you finish a pass and looks like this, just dab it up. Same as this one here that we talked about. We need to make sure that we fill this kind of stuff in. I would personally perform an actual corner wrap to connect the separate passes around the corner. Look at how I'm welding around the corner on this example here. You can see that the corners are properly done with their own little wraps or connections. And with this one here, we just want to connect and fill in these corners. This will prevent these dimples or craters from occurring here. However, taking a look at this naughty little turkey here, here is the absolute number one way I would take care of this and prevent it from happening ever. And this is something that most people would never expect. You ready? Take care of the problem before it actually happens. Come on, people. We know better when we are planning and we can identify that we are going to be welding towards an open corner. We know that this overheating or this blowout is going to occur. There's no way around it. Here is what you do. If you are welding towards an open corner, make sure that you put some good filler material or a proper corner wrap at the end before or you start this welding pass. This is gonna create some material at the end which is going to catch a lot of this heat for you. And this is gonna prevent this from spilling out over the edge and creating the problem that we see here. I do this all the time with pretty much every joint that I'm doing, but 100% of the time, if I identify before I start welding that I'm heading towards an open corner, I always will make sure that I perform a proper wrap at the end or a good button of filler material at the end just to catch some of this heat. Take a look at this welding exercise here. I did this one a while ago. I am gonna be welding towards this open corner here. And I know for a fact, this is going to barf out and overheat near the end. So I put a good heat catch here at the end first. And then that way, when I am actually welding towards it, the heat is gonna stay in control. I do not have the problem that we are worried about. 
and then take a look at it after the fact. Look at it, it looks great. It takes a little bit of planning, but trust me, when you do this, you don't have to back off the heat as much, which is great, because naturally what happens is a lot of people will see things starting to blow out, they pull their heat back quite a bit, and then what happens? It compromises penetration into the base material, which is what we want. When we have a little bit of heat catch or some material at the end, like the example I'm talking about here, we're gonna be able to keep the heat up and maintain proper penetration. So again, with this example here, it would have been as simple as taking like 30 seconds to set this one up and then we can rip a complete pass without having to worry about this problem at all and it never happened. Okay, calves have been hit. We've learned a lot about welding so far. What's next? Leg extension machine. Quads, you are going down. Getting set up here, taking a quick look at everything around me and well, would you look at that. This is something that drives me insane. Remember earlier we talked about our tie-ins? Here's a perfect example of exactly this happening here. We can see that this one has been connected, but this start-stop has not been blended in at all. Come on. We can see blatant lack of fusion and or cold lapping, whatever you want to call it. This is definitely something that needs to be fixed. Remember, especially with steel, this is something that has to be fixed for problems later down the line because steel is more prone to corrosion, especially when stuff is somewhere near the ocean there's a lot of salt water present as well as being in a gym with a lot of sweaty people corrosion collects in these areas here and it is pretty much inevitable at some point it will start to develop and eat away at the parent material starts and stops are notoriously prone to having these problems so let's get our welding game swole and take care of this problem this one is very simple actually check this out this might be something I would demonstrate as easy as just grabbing and taking extreme care of it with a grinder or in some cases even a tick welding torch. Using my grinder, I would typically use something like this pad here. There's a lot of different types of pads appropriate for different types of metal. Whatever you're doing, do your research. But all I'm going to do is just use the edge of the pad and just tickle this area down. The main thing is that I want to be careful that I do not touch the parent material. Remember with the previous joint, we learned a lot about the integrity of the parent material. Again, if you missed that one, go back and watch it. Here's the timestamp right here. Basically, all I want to do is fuzz this little spot down. And as I do so, I want to make sure that there's no areas where there's any lack of fusion or any porosity in there. Porosity can occur a lot easier than you think, and buzzing this down quickly is gonna show you right away if you have any problems like that to take care of. Getting things down without messing with your base material is obviously the goal here. And if you see everything starts to look good like this here, I would just leave it like that. Especially with wire feed, just really make sure that you take the time to check out the connections with your welding passes. Cut down any extra material on starts or buttons. This way we can be sure we can prevent any kind of cold lap or any problems like we see here. Now, honestly, an even simpler way of taking care of a problem like this is just to grab and use my TIG torch. I will literally just fire up on any extra filler material that is seated right here and just wash it backwards and forwards. I just wanna take this filler material and completely blend it in without trying to make this area any bigger than it has to be. This can also double check to make sure that your edges are completely blended in with proper fusion. And remember how we talked about when using a grinder, you might find some evidence of porosity in there. Washing it over with your torch is gonna take care of this problem completely. And again, like I talked about, this stuff happens. It's not a big deal. It's just a matter of taking a few extra seconds to take care of it so we won't have any of these problems that we potentially have to worry about later down the line. Okay, legs, super jacked, check. Let's hit abs and get out of here. Cable crunches, getting a set of these down and feeling good i like these but wait a minute looking around and checking out this machine what is this oh come on now seriously here's another example of something we could take care of so easily look at this area here we can see that these welding passes have not been connected now again this may have been fine for the production of this job but seriously these are like an inch apart let's just connect them a lot of people usually skimp out on joints like this simply because the angle gets a little bit tight in here. Making a connection is a little more inconvenient when the angle tightens up, but seriously, this is not that hard to take care of. Look at this welding joint I did right here. Kind of tough to tell here, but look at this corner here. Do you know how tight this angle was? There is a complete weld that travels down and around the corner and inside the entire way. It can be done. It just takes a little time and a bit of setup. So looking at this one here, we can absolutely take care of this little gap and properly connect these buddies so they can make friends. 
This is an exercise that I taught here on a different video that I did. We can see that the angle gets really tight in here as well, but look how consistent I was able to keep things. When the angle gets tight, here's the cool thing about TIG welding. I would typically just unscrew this and pull the length of my tungsten out just a little bit. I would then increase the working gas flow through my regulator, and without even doing it that much, you're gonna find that you're gonna be able to reach into areas like this much better. And you can make sure that you properly connect things like this. When you do have something like this to deal with, I would always recommend that you start and or stop in this area here. It's much easier to reach in and fill up. It's a little easier to hide inconsistencies in a spot like this. If you were running right through this area that was in the middle of the pass, it might be a little bit tricky to keep this consistency up. So just make sure that you start and do your stops in this area here. Now taking a look at this thing overhead, obviously sometimes we can understand that a lot of this stuff has got to be welded out of position. Sometimes things can be in a jig or a fixture on a table, overhead, who knows. But honestly, something like this can always be taken care of. Like I mentioned, if you are starting from this area here, this would allow you to reach a little further down with a longer tungsten reach, fill things up a little bit more, and in any position where you are kind of stuck in something like this, I would always recommend to weld uphill instead of trying to weld downhill. Typically, from my experience, when you start to weld downhill, while it can absolutely be done sometimes, it will start to push the filler material out towards the edges of the weld, sometimes making things a little bit wider than they have to be. So with something like this, when we want to keep it narrow and focused, we have limited space to work with. Anytime you're welding with tricky stuff like this, I would recommend welding uphill instead of trying to weld downhill if possible. Now, honestly, I wanna take a moment to stop here and say that in the gym, for everything that I looked at today, I did see a lot of great welding. We can see passes that have been centered really well. A lot of stuff properly blended into the base material. I saw some great work with connecting corners and different passes, and I just saw some great looking stuff overall. Now, while today we are breaking down a few grumpy spots on somebody's work, I never want to pick on anybody's work or throw any kind of shade in any way. Remember everybody, We've all thrown down total stinkers before. It happens. I hope that we can learn from what we saw here today and have some fun in the process. Again, my friends, download this free workbook. It is waiting for you in the description below. It's free. Print it out, learn lots. And if you want to go even deeper with some really high level TIG welding techniques, hit this episode right here. It's one of the most important ones that I've done for Pacific Arc TIG welding. I am Dusty James Phil. Until we'll talk soon. Peace.